1 John chapter 4 tonight. As we continue in our series on the book of 1 John, where John writes, verse number 1, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Lord, I thank you for this time. I thank you for this truth and for the book of 1 John. And Lord, just it's a practical help to us. Lord, I pray you'd help me now to speak those things which would be true according to your word. And Lord, would you touch our hearts? Lord, help us understand these truths and to apply them to our lives tonight. In Jesus' name I ask. Amen. We look tonight at this passage, an interesting passage, some great verses inside of these, this, next, uh, this next portion. I love verse number four, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Wow, what a powerful verse, what a tremendous promise, what a powerful truth and potential that we have, and we'll get there. And I love what John talks about, verse number six, we are of God. He gives us our heritage, and we'll look at that as well. But he begins chapter 4, after he leaves some of the concepts of God's love in chapter 3, he begins chapter 4 with kind of a a practical application and something for us to, to look at and to do. He begins to warn us that there are some false spirits in the world. That there are some false truth out there. There are not false truth. There's some false teachings out there. And they're going to try to deceive Christians. He begins chapter one or chapter four with that word beloved. He again adopts that word of comfort and love to these, to these people he's writing to, these Christians. And he says, beloved, like little child, little children, listen, hold on. I want to warn you about something. There are going to be some false teachings that if you're not careful, you can be deceived by. He's warning of us, not only back then, but today, that there are false teachers out there who are going to appear like they are good Christians. They're going to appear like they have good truth, but John is telling us they're not. In fact, he tells us, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but they are anti-Christ. Now, the word anti-Christ we use for the end times, never in a positive sense. If someone says uh, to you, you're the anti-Christ, they don't mean it as a compliment. All right, it's not a, oh, wow, well, thank you. Wow, my, I knew my mom would name me well. No, 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 we'd say, whoa, whoa, are you kidding me? That person who's an anti-Christ in the end times, boy, he is the son of perdition. I mean, he's, you know, he's not the son of perdition, but he is, he is terrible. He is against everything that God has. And John brings this word in this conversation. If I can give you a thought for us tonight to kind of begin this message, here's the thought. Don't be a gullible Christian. Don't be a gullible Christian. Have you ever met someone who's pretty gullible? I have. I was youth pastor for four years here at First Baptist Church. What a wonderful time with gullible teenagers. It seemed like, and it's not true, but it seemed like it was more so some of the young ladies that were in my youth group that were more gullible. I remember one we told that broccoli grew on trees. And she believed us. Because they're shaped like trees. We had a nice long story and she was hoping to go see the, the broccoli trees. I remember one time when I was youth pastor, we're heading to, uh, to the senior trip to New York City. We're driving, we're probably four or five hours from, from New York City. You remember this, Miss Evans, right? Uh, and and uh, oh, there on the, on the left hand side, oh look, I said, there is, there is the World Trade Center. This was after 9-11. And they were two radio towers that just had little red, red lights on top. Boom. Faces in the side of the bus. Wow. Pictures. Click, 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 click. Gullible. 
gullible. But I know some Christians who are gullible. Pastor, did you see that guy on TV? He was healing everybody. Really? Where are they right now in the COVID-19 pandemic? What I wouldn't do for a faith healer tonight. He can make a lot of money right now, couldn't he? Going through hospitals, through ships, just going through and healing people left and right. But strangely, they're silent right now. Oh, Pastor, have you, have you seen this guy? He has 10,000 people in his church every Sunday. Wow. Don't be a gullible Christian. I read a story about one of the, the most famous con artists. His name was George C. Parker. He is uh, claimed to be one of the most remembered and most successful swindlers in American history. He set up an office in New York City and sold some of the city's most famous attractions. Here's a few things that he sold. He sold the Statue of Liberty to someone. He sold Madison, Madison Square Garden and he sold Grant's tomb. He produced elaborately forged documents and deeds to convince his targets that he was the rightful owner of the landmark he was selling. But his probably his most successful swindle was when he sold the Brooklyn Bridge. He did such a good job of selling the Brooklyn Bridge that the police had to come to the new owners when they began to set up toll booths on the bridge to collect money. It was at that point he was finally convicted for fraud and sentenced to life at Sing Sing Prison in New York. Gullible, gullible people. Don't be a gullible Christian. I read a little bit of truth from an atheist. Atheist is someone who, who says there is no God. He was being interviewed by a minister, Marilyn Sewell. She was interviewing this atheist and having a theological discussion with him. In part of the exchange, the minister said this, The religion you cite in your book to this atheist, Hitchens, is that the fundamentalist faith is the truest faith. She said, I'm a liberal Christian, and I don't take the stories from Scripture literally. I don't believe in the doctrine of atonement, that Jesus died for our sins. Do you make any distinction between fundamentalist faith and liberal religion? I was a minister who asked that of an atheist, someone who says there is no God. This was his response. The atheist said this, he said, I would say that if you don't believe that Jesus of Nazareth was the Christ and the Messiah and that he rose again from the dead and by his sacrifice our sins are forgiven, you're really not in any meaningful sense a Christian. Yeah. <laughs> he, he had more truth in that statement than she had in the rest of the interview, it seemed like. It went, went on, the article went on to say that at that point, this Unitarian minister wanted no more of that conversation. But beyond that, in the 1980s, it was a very prominent televangelist. His name was Peter Popoff, who during his services and revivals, apparently, because in 1980 I was just born, so I don't remember this, I read this, that he would call out names and home addresses of audience members that he had never, ever met before. He even would know, they said, personal details such as family members' illnesses and deceased loved ones' names. So convincing that it was said that he, uh, that people believed he got his message from God or from angels, and it greatly impressed his audience and followers. Until one day, in 1986, there was a magician by the name of James the Amazing Randy. He heard about Peter Popoff's amazing abilities, and he, the magician, decided to investigate what was going on. And he noticed an apparent detail, a minor detail, that many, if not thousands of people missed. That Peter Popoff appeared to be wearing a hearing aid. A hearing aid. Upon closer examination and using a radio scanner, the James the Amazing Randy Magician discovered that Peter Popoff was actually getting information using a shortwave radio from his wife. And she would meet these people and then tell him what was, what was going on about them. He fooled thousands. Yet, 
what I read here that while tarnished, the scandal tarnished his ministry, he eventually recovered and remains active today. How? How can a fraud like that remain active today? Because there are gullible people and gullible Christians. You say, well, pastor, listen, we go to a good church and, and listen, I, I'm not going to follow some faith healer. Well, can I, can I turn it maybe a little differently tonight for us? I'm not talking about the news and COVID-19. I want to talk about, though, on social media and all these platforms on the internet. There's a whole lot of information out there, isn't there? And you read this article about this guy who says he loves Jesus, and then you post these statements from these guys, and you have no idea, you have no idea what their testimony is. You say, well, pastor, this really touched my heart. You know, and it'll be some flowery statement. Pain is the petals of life's flower. What does that even mean? Yet I can see it posted all over Pinterest tomorrow. Pain, the petal of life's flower. Say, wow, that really moved me. When we should be moved by the word of God, we're moved by these pithy sayings and sometimes from good meaning men and women and, and we don't know. And, and John says, be careful, don't be a gullible Christian because there are false teachers, false spirits out there, false prophets. I want to notice tonight the first point, the particular problem that we encounter. The particular problem that we encounter. He says that there are false prophets out there. I don't believe that this gift of prophecy like we would think about it in the Old Testament is still in working in the same way today as it did in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament there were prophets. God would speak to them and they would foretell uh, the, the future. They would say, repent or this is going to happen. That was Jonah to Nineveh in the whole book of Jonah. All right, repent or you're all going to get wiped out. All right, it's going to happen in the future. Daniel, uh, in, in his book, you see the prophecy, future events that will happen. I believe the Bible teaches that that was one of the gifts in the New Testament that God has now done away with because we have the Bible. So when John says false prophets, I don't believe he's talking about foretelling, but I'd use this word, forth telling. Another definition of the prophets is one who would say the truth or tell the truth. Like, listen, you're a dirty, rotten scoundrel, repent, or you're going to die and spend eternity in hell. That's forth telling. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. Telling the truth, that's forth telling. So I believe when John mentions that word of false prophets in verse number one of chapter four, he's not talking about foretelling prophets, but forth telling prophets. He said there are these false prophets, these false teachers, these ones who are claiming to tell the truth and telling forth the truth, but they're not real. They're fake. They're frauds. And John gives us, first of all, an expectation. An expectation. An expectation to know whether these spirits, these false prophets, are of God or they're not of God. You see, we're not all on the same side. All right, we're not just one big happy family. All right, there are those who follow Christ and there are those who are against Christ. All right, in case you're wondering, I'm a follower of Christ. I'm not the same as everybody else. Now, I'm not talking about little minor differences. Wow, well, in their church, they use blue, blue pews and we use tan pews. All right, obviously, we have the truth and they don't. I'm not talking about that. But every place that claims to be a church in Saginaw is not the same. And they don't all teach the truth like the Bible gives us the truth. That's what I'm talking about. It makes a difference and we have a responsibility to know who is of God and who is not. He doesn't want us to be a blind follower. You ought to check what people say against the Bible because the Bible is always right. You ought to check what I say against the Bible. Acts 17, 11, These were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. You see, we cannot just navigate this, this time of social media and this time of, of, of information, of a super highway of information, really, on TV and our phones and our computers and our iPads 
and not have the discernment to know what is truth and what is not. We can't just accept it all because it's not all truth. It's not all of God. We don't want to be like the father I read about who's vacationing with his family. He came across a large sign that read, Road closed, do not enter. I have a confession to make. Those signs always tempt me. I, I, I admit, I have gone down roads closed, do not enter roads before. Are they really closed? Or are they just like pretend to be closed? Uh, I may be the guy who'd put a, rose closed on, a road closed on my road just to keep people off my road, okay? I, but, but this man, I guess was like me, he proceeded around the sign because he was confident it would save them time in their journey. A man after my own heart. His wife was resistant to the adventure. But there was no turning back, she said, for her persistent road warrior. After a few miles of successful navigation, he began to boast about his gift of discernment. And his proud smile, as the story goes, was quickly replaced with humble sweat when he came upon upon a washed-out bridge. But that wasn't the end of the story. He carefully turned the car back around and retraced his steps back to the main road. And as they came upon that original warning sign that said on the backside, road road closed, do not enter. As he came upon it this way, he read this sign, welcome back, stupid. (laughs) Sometimes road closed means road closed. Don't be a gullible Christian. There's an expectation to know what is right and what is wrong. And then we have the examination here. The Bible says in verse number 2, Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Here's the examination. Here's the test. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. You say, well, Pastor, that seems like a pretty simple test. Here, John is giving us a tremendous truth. The truth that Jesus Christ came to earth and by implication of his name that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. Jesus is the Savior, Christ the Anointed One. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is come in the flesh to the earth, come to seek and to save that which was lost. The test that John is giving to us is one of salvation. What is this particular truth, this teacher's view of salvation? Now listen, there are a whole lot of other things that we may from the Bible disagree with, but the test that John is giving to us tonight is one of salvation. Is this this teacher, is this preacher is this online person and this viral youtube video uh, person are they teaching the gospel according to god's word jesus christ come in the flesh the son of god spotless sinless lamb of god dying for all of mankind or are they teaching something else you can't just have a time of faith you must have a time when you trust jesus christ You can't just believe that everyone goes to heaven. That's false teaching. There are some people who have had some huge ministries. I mean huge ministries, thousands upon thousands, who don't believe that Jesus is the only way to heaven. John says that is a false teacher. And I'm sorry, they may be nice people. They may be friendly people. But they are not true people preachers and teachers of God's word. Some will overemphasize feelings. How could a loving God send someone to hell? Well, what I know is this. God says he is love and that he does send people to hell if they reject his son. He makes it easy. You can believe on Jesus Christ. I like what Pastor Lett said. It is as easy as eating a piece of bread or taking a drink of water. It is that easy. They'll overemphasize his love. They'll overemphasize the feelings. They'll say, like that original minister I talked about, Marilyn Sewell, that this book right here is just a bunch of fairy tales. Not really real. And then they'll have some statement that'll just touch your heart. You'll say, oh, 
oh, I got to repost this. This is life changing, Pastor. You say, well, what's the danger in that? Well, the danger is what John says they are. He tells us in verse number three that if they don't confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, they are the spirit of Antichrist. When I was studying this and I read that, I, it, it kind of struck me how powerful this statement is that John is giving to us. He's not just saying they should be rebuked. We would not just rebuke the Antichrist. We would completely reject the Antichrist. Because the Antichrist, by definition, is against Jesus Christ. Anti-God. There is nothing that can be gained from someone who is anti-God. If, if John calls him anti-Christ against Jesus Christ, then I want nothing, nada, zilch to do with them. Nothing. Not at all. And not just some nice things to say. They are anti-Christ. They are the very epitome of what we are against. I am for Christ and I'm against the devil. I am for Christ and I'm against anything that is against him. All well, the pastor, they smile so nice. And they say such nice platitudes. God wants you to be blessed and God does want to bless us. That's not all he wants though. He wants us to serve him and follow him. Several years ago, in Long Beach, California, a fellow went into a fried chicken place and bought a couple of chicken dinners for himself and for his date one late afternoon. The young woman at the counter inadvertently gave him the proceeds from the whole day, a whole bag of money, and much of it was cash, instead of fried chicken. After driving to the picnic site, the two of them sat down to open the meal and enjoy some chicken together. And they discovered a whole lot more than chicken, over $800. But this man was unusual. He quickly put the money back in the bag. They got back in the car and drove all the way back. This gentleman got out, walked back into the restaurant, and instantly became a hero. By that time, as you can imagine, the manager was just frantic. And the man with the bag of money looked the manager in the eye and said... I want you to know, I came by to get a couple of chicken dinners and wound up with all this money. Here it is. Well, the manager was thrilled to death. He said, oh great, let me call the newspaper. I'm going to have your picture put in the local paper. You are the most honest man I have ever heard of. To which the man quickly responded, oh no, 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 don't do that. He leaned closer, closer and whispered, you see, the woman I'm with is not my wife. She's someone else's wife. Oh. They were pastor. They sound so nice. But really, they're just a fraud. Wow. See, John wants us to be careful when our examination, the expectation, the explanation. We want to be for God and against anything that He is against. Yes. Everything out there it's not real. There's a lot of nice things floating around. And listen, folks, I'm not against all of them. I'm not, I'm not against these pithy little sayings. But I'm against anyone who is anti-Christ. And John says the way you, you can tell is if you know what their view on the gospel is. Do they claim that Jesus Christ came in the flesh? Jesus Christ, by definition, by his name, the Savior of mankind? If not, if not, if not... John tells us in verse 6, they are a spirit of error. To be shunned and rejected. John wants us to follow truth. Don't be a gullible Christian. No matter how nice they sound or how good they look. Have the spirit of God bring truth in your life. Lord, I thank you for your word. Lord, I thank you that we can know what is true. Know what is false. Lord, there is so much information that bombards us. But I'm talking about spiritual information. Little sayings, little quotes. 
Lord, I want to be careful that we follow your truth and your word. Lord, help those who are listening that they would be, they'd be cautious. They'd have the, the, the discernment to discern what is true from your word, from your spirit. And I wonder if tonight there's someone listening. Maybe you've heard or thought that to go to heaven, you just had to be good, right? To join a church. The Bible tells us that the only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Tonight, my friend, if you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, you can trust Him. You can pray right where you're at, right at home, wherever you're at. Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know I deserve to pay for my sin. But I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me. Would you save me and take me to heaven? I trust you and you alone. My friend, if you've never trusted Christ, would you trust Him tonight? Would you admit you're a sinner? Lord, I admit I'm a sinner. I know I deserve to pay for my sin. Tell him, he'll hear you. But I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me. Would you please save me and take me to heaven? I trust him and him alone. The Bible says, him that cometh to me, that's Jesus, I will in no wise cast out. My friend, if you've trusted Christ tonight, would you do us a favor and let us know? We'd love to, I'd love to send you a free book. Help you in your walk as a Christian, your growth as a Christian. I believe on your screen you'll see a phone number, an email, and a website. We'd love to rejoice with you. Christian, in this time that you're sheltering in place, would you be careful? Would you not just believe every, quote, spiritual truth, quote, that you see? But as you, like John, has asked us to do, would you try the spirits? Would you see the ones that are true and false? Follow those that are true. Lord, help these. Maybe there's someone out there tonight who needs to trust you as your Savior. Would they do that tonight? But help the Christians who are with us tonight, that they would have the discernment that your spirit brings and not be gullible and be fooled. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen.